We live in a very divided country. Whether it's politics, wokeness, cancel culture, etc. It seems we can never agree on anything nowadays. But one thing that everyone has agreed on is that Velma is a bad show. But why? Well, let's find out. What's it called? Smells like mommy. Oh. Mm. Yes, it's terrible. Freddy named it. Which brings us to the point of your internship. <gasps> you mean I'm not just a diversity hire for the company photo shoot? The missile knows where it is at all times. So the show is about Velma, who is now a black lesbian, going to high school, as she has to solve the mystery of who an unknown person is that's been going around killing people. And she must find out what happened to her mother who disappeared when she was a little kid. But every time she tries to solve a mystery, she gets hallucinations. The show is also about Shaggy, who goes by Novel in the series, but I prefer calling him Shaggy. Daddy. And you guys are gonna love what the people making Velma did with his character. They made Shaggy into a pathetic simp. I wish I was joking, but it gets worse. They also made Fred into a bumbling caricature of what people who hate white straight men think of straight white men. He also happens to be sexist. Because doesn't everyone love it when you take fan favorite characters, completely change them, and make them into a pile of shit? Hey Fred! Do I know you? It's Velma from school. You cheat off me in Spanish because you think I'm Mexican. Maybe. I have a disease where I can't recognize people who aren't hot. They tell Fred a pout in this show. You would think that the people who made Velma hated the character of Fred for some reason. But I guess we were supposed to find out the constant jokes about how pathetic of a person Fred is funny. The comedy in this show gives Amy Schumer a run for her money. Like, the jokes in Velma are so very annoying. All of the jokes in Velma are either stupid political jokes or annoying, unfunny meta jokes. Why are you changing the subject? <laughs> I'm not changing the subject. But wouldn't you agree that the strongest use of flashbacks on TV is when one character's flashback is intercut with another's to eventually combine in the present storyline? <gasps> you are totally changing the subject! You are, Daphne. That is interesting. You're saying if this was a flashback in your point of view, in order for it to be earned, we'd have to cut to, I don't know, Fred? Exactly! I like it when they use a title card with the character's name when they cut to a different flashback. Now that feels lazy. It's stylized! It's Tarantino! What is the incident- the show also fails at having a good protagonist. There is nothing in the show that makes Velma a likable character whatsoever. And Velma is constantly judging and belittling people. There's a moment in season 1 where Velma is calling someone a white girl with too much money. While Velma is literally trying to sell drugs to her. Art. <coughs> White girl with too much money? <coughs> White girl with too much money? You don't know me. Oh yes, Velma. You are so much better than that person. And everyone. You are the greatest person to ever live. Just keep doing you and keep being mean to every unfortunate soul who crosses your path. Even your own friends who care about you, like Novel. Seriously, Velma is just such a dick in this series. And speaking of dicks, how many small penis jokes does one show need to have? There's a joke in the show about Fred having a small penis that basically becomes an ongoing joke. And man, if you didn't find it funny the first time, you definitely won't find it funny the other 500 fucking times. The season 1 episode, Fogfest, is basically about Velma dressing up as a man, and by the end of the episode, she comes to the conclusion that men can get away with pretty much anything and have it so much easier than women. You know, for a show made by people who are massive SJWs and claim to be anti-sexism, that's a pretty sexist thing to say. It's like 1984 level backwards talk, like 2 plus 2 equals 4, unless if Big Brother says otherwise, then it could equal 5. 5, 6, 3, etc. Oh, being sexist is bad. Except for when we do it. In actuality, being sexist is always bad, whether you're being sexist against women or men. You know, another frustrating thing about Velma is that they actually had a decent cast of people voicing the characters, but gave all of them terrible dialogue. Like, the person who voices Velma has a good voice for the main character of a series. Novo's dad is voiced by the dude who played Fred's fake dad in Mystery Inc. Fred's dad in Velma is literally voiced by Frank Welko, aka the guy who's usually the voice of Scooby-Doo and has been playing Fred since 1969. 
they even got wheeled out to voice a character in Velma. Oh, are you an exchange student from a more sexually liberated country? Out of all the legendary singles, why wheeled out? How much money did they offer you? Real or cake? <laughs> Real! And I could only stomach watching one season of the show before it became too irritatingly awful to continue watching. So I haven't seen any of season 2. But from what I hear from trustworthy sources, it is basically the same as season 1, but they brought in even more classic well-known Scooby-Doo characters to mess up. But the show didn't have to be bad. Like look at this picture, not a bad out style, and the show has pretty good background. But the animation feels very stiff and robotic. It feels like the animation had a budget of $2. But still, it could have been good. I especially liked the hallucination scenes. Even though it didn't make sense as part of the story, those were pretty good looking scenes. However, instead of making something actually decent, the people behind the show decided to make it the most comically stereotypical woke show. I swear. Well, this is what you'd imagine a parody of woke stuff to be. What if we made a Scooby-Doo spinoff where Velma and Shaggy are black? And Velma is a lesbian and gets in a relationship with Daphne. And what if Daphne was Asian and had two moms and one of them was black? And look, this might be controversial to say, but I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with changing a character's race. Hear me out. The Marvel character, Nick Fiori, used to be white and very different than the version of him that would eventually go on to be in the MCU. But Samuel Jackson kicks ass as Nick Fury. And I don't think any other version of the character could ever be as good as Samuel Jackson's portrayal. He was especially awesome in Captain America Winter Soldier. Window integrity 19%. Offensive measures advised. Wait! Window integrity 1%. Which leads me to believe him getting cast as the character wasn't just a woke diversity hire, but it was actually because he was just the best person to play the character. The problem isn't changing a character's race. The problem is why. If your motivation to change the race of an already existing character is to just piss off fans and be able to brag about diversity in your show, and so you can get a bunch of activists coming to your defense anytime someone criticizes your show, calling them a bigot, then you don't belong in the entertainment business. And yeah, when Velma actually came out, it was so bad that no one was able to defend it. But when the trailer for it dropped, there were people who were quick to try to cancel Moist Critical and accuse him of being a bigot. Which is absolutely insane, because Moist Critical is known as easily the most level-headed guy on YouTube. What? Uh... Man, this screams like a show made by people that hate the audience that they're borrowing the IP from. What, what is the point? Like, why not just make your own original one? Why immediately antagonize people who just want Scooby-Doo? Why do you just keep saying white guy take? What? Is that bait or a joke? It's self-aware of incel toxicity, but it's not incel toxicity. This is legitimately anything. <laughs> it's... It's people that just like the original property. When I heard this new version of Judy Jetson wouldn't be boy crazy, the only word I had to describe my disgust is jinkies. If there is one thing the internet agrees on, it's that you should never change anything ever. See, like, it's just, that, that has nothing to do with incels or anything. It's just people that like the property. That has, that has absolutely nothing at all to do with incels or anything. Why do you think- are you- are you- are you being serious? I can't- who is in this chat right now? Why do you think caring about Scooby-Doo entails keeping a character white then? I haven't said anything about her skin color. This is the most Twitter shit of all time. All I'm saying is the opening line is immediately just shitting on people that like the property in general. I have said legitimately nothing about her skin color. Like, I actually think half of these people are legitimate racists that immediately turn everything into skin color. 
I have, as I've said twice now, I don't care what they do with a character's skin color at all. I am saying this opening line is immediately just shitting on fans of the property that they are borrowing from. That's it. I've seen four different people say that same shit now, and I legitimately think you are racist. But if hating a show that is borderline pedophilic makes me a bigot, then I guess I'm a bigot. Oh yeah, that's a very fun fucking not so fun fact about the stumpsophile of a series. The reason I didn't give episode 1 another watch when I was binging the series for this video is because of one very questionable decision that they made in it. Velma episode 1 has a scene in it that shows a bunch of characters that are supposed to be teenagers. Taking a shower. Guys, breaking news! I found out who was actually on the Epstein flight logs. Everyone at WB Discovery! For legal reasons, that is a joke. Some things at WB never change. There's been a lot of discussions about whether animated child porn counts as actual child porn. And if you have to debate people on it, maybe you shouldn't even make it. For the record, while it may not be technically the same thing, I do consider animation depicting naked characters who are intended to be minors pedophilic. I'm not trying to say the people who made Velma are actual pedophiles. They might just be very dumb and incompetent and were just trying to make this adult show very edgy by putting nudity in it. I don't know. But it is also kind of odd how this isn't the first borderline pedophilic moment in something released by WB Discovery in the last few years. Do you guys remember that cutscene in the recent game Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League? Where Poison Ivy gets like magically transformed into a kid somehow. I don't know, I didn't play it. But then Howdy Quinn, who is an adult in the game, says that Poison Ivy is now fun-sized. <laughs> me about it. Wasn't expecting you to come in fun size. You really don't know me? Harley and Ivy forever? Intense story burning letters? What the hell is even that? But hey, Velma was an awful show, but at least it seems like they are finally canceling it and moving on to what will hopefully be a better Scooby-Doo series. At the very least, this new anime style Scooby-Doo series will definitely be interesting. And I will say this about Velma. It did kind of impress me when I was watching it. I didn't think anything from the Scooby-Doo franchise could be worse than Return to Zombie Island, but somehow Velma made that movie look like a masterpiece. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Cartoon Post out. We used to go see Mickey Mouse till that some bitch went woke. We can't afford no hundred dollar ticket now, we're broke. You pay to park, you wait in line, and you're already pissed. Come sit down in a circle, let's indoctrinate your kids. So we don't want your movies, and we don't want your rides. We'll just say.